That's good. Um, clamshell boxes. It's not my idea. I got the concept from a fellow over in the UK, Ray. Why? Why do I can't think of this? Name? Thank you. <laughs> See, this is what happened of late. My wife's family. Sugar Ray Leonard. There you go. My wife's family's got issues with Alzheimer's disease, and it's rubbing off with me and her. Uh, anyway, so when I was over visiting Ray in his shop, we made a clamshell box. And what makes it a clamshell box is you have to pry it apart. And if you can see this, you can't see that very close. Can you see that closely? You've got to do it over the top. Look at this, it's getting close, I'm getting closer. Well, the idea is you know, pry it open and you've got a little box. This one is very thin, okay? And you can make, you can choose to make it fat. There's one that's fat, okay? One of the things that you need to remember to do when you make it is you gotta leave a little bit of a groove here so you get your nail in there to pop it open. Unfortunately with this one, maybe a little sanding would work, but I didn't do that. But this one works just fine. And when you know it's a good fit, you hear that? Get that little squeak kind of sound. So it's, excuse me. Anyway, so that's what you like to hear, and that's a good fit. Now, so I went, I made these several years ago, and I started trying to make them again. So as I started to make them again, I don't know that I achieved that nice fit. They seem to hold together. They've got a little groove to put your nail in. This one's a little bit thicker, you can see. I'm going to just pass these around in a second. And this is the last one I made. Just, again, a little piece. You can put things in there. People ask, what are you going to put in there? Well, there's enough room for jewelry, maybe some folded coins, maybe some other stuff that you might want to keep in there in your pocket, in your purse. Exactly. Um, and you can choose any kind of wood you want. Yes. Is the inside flat or concave? Say that again. Is the inside flat or concave? Everything has got a shape to it. I don't make anything flat. So I've carved this out and I'll show you that with the demo. This is also carved. This one feels pretty good as far as uniform thickness. And all I did was sand it. I don't think I put any, there's no finish on it per se, just sanding. You want to pass it? I'm going to pass those. Oh, so so that that was a clamshell box with a mirror. Yes, and that was a bigger piece, more of a purse, you know, something for sure that a woman would want. But I sold one of these this summer. That was just a beautiful little piece of wood. And the guy says, oh, "I gotta have that." He put it in his pocket. He's not giving it to his girlfriend, you know. So, Marie. This one's not one of those. All right, so the way I learned to make it when I was with Ray Key, we would take a piece of wood, maybe about this thick. We would mount it on the lathe, make a little uh, tenon on this end, flip it around, bring up the tailstock, and use a parting tool to part the wood. So that's what I did with this one. And I found that's more work. And when you try to part something, and you don't want to lose a lot of the wood. I find that to be more difficult. So what I decided is a better way. The better way is to just take a piece of wood, 
cut it in half on a bandsaw, and now you can make it whatever thickness you want as a final product. And I'll show you what we're going to do when I take something like this. This is a little bit hard. This is a uh, an exotic wood, and I think it would take a lot of time, and it's going to smell bad in here. Don't want to do that. Don't cut easily. I'm going to use a piece of, I believe this is just maple. And you cut it in half. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mount this on my chuck. We're going to make a tenon on one end, flip it over, put it in the chuck, and then decide how thick I want it, shape of the inside. And the key is what is the connection, that little connection of the lid to the bottom as it fits tight. And that's the difficult thing to, you got to sneak up on. So we'll see if I can sneak up on one and not totally screw it up. Yeah, I'm going to show one more. We can do this. So this was one that I did at a demo for the Chicago Wood Workers five, six years ago, and I just found this piece sitting in the box. It still fits tight. But this is with the tenon on the end. Bottom has been carved out, or the top has been carved out. I do the top first, so the top has the female part. The bottom is going to be the male part. If you have to give it a gender. One thing I did forget, I did forget when I'm deciding how thick I want to make it, you can put a drill hole in here with a certain thickness and say, I'm not going to go that far down. We'll sort of do it by eye. Use my eye chronometer tonight and we'll see whether that works. So this was cut on the bandsaw and it wasn't cut as it waved. It's not a straight cut. So I'm going to put the flat side against the chuck jaws to show you what I do. First, I got to mark the center. I didn't bring anything, so it's going to be a, an eyeball for the center. Okay. I haven't talked about safety. I'm sorry, Frank. I do use a face shield because when I've got it on the blade like this, I get a catch what's, what's holding on this end. Well, just pressure here. But I think I've got enough pressure on that to hold that tight while I spin this around to, I'm going to make this face flat. I'm going to put the tenon on this end. I've got almost all um, big mark chucks, and they're almost all the dovetail on it. I have a lovely tool here that, for me, when I hold this perpendicular, this matches the dovetail. <clears throat> so,
So I know that's going to fit nice and tight in the jaw. All right, so this is flat. We'll give a nice thing for our chuck to attach to. And just push in the middle. So now it's your design opportunity for the diameter that you want, how thick you're going to make it, what you think that top is going to look like. And I just, I tend to make it more like a, what I want to put some words in. Like a clamshell. <laughs> anyway, that's my thought process. here, and that seems to be a nice flat surface right now. What we're looking for is a lip on this box. It gives us some strength to push down on and enough depth to hold the male part that's going in. And I will just start by making this So, I want to just kind of measure to see what I've got approximately. That's about three and a half inches. That's fine. So now there's several ways that you can carve this out. And we're going to see what way it works, seems to work best. I will make a mark with my little skew with how wide I want this to be. And I'm going to go from there. So you can start in the middle just like you're making a bowl. Pushing. little feature getting side grain, in grain, spinning. And I'm keeping an eye on how deep I'm going. If I want to work a little bit differently, I can do a pull cut. Well, I'm using a very, like a half inch uh, bowl gouge, but you can use a spindle gouge the same way. Or you can use a bowl gouge with a 
flat edge on one side, curved on the other, which is what Ray Key used to use when he was doing solid a lot of, of anti-grain boxes. I was just wondering, on those where you actually glue a mirror in there, and if the wood is moving in different, if, if there's some advantage in doing it with an end grain piece versus side grain Well, a little experimentation. I used to just make, it. I still do make them, they're just a, like a pocket compact, okay? But not with a lid on it. And it's just that with a mirror in there. So I make the, I make the space just a slightly larger than the mirror. And I'm using the epoxy that's gonna stick onto the glass. And that doesn't seem to be a problem. In fact, I have glass that grows, and now I can't get the glass off of that wood form, which is still in good shape. So <clears throat> that is something that does seem to hold it very well. Um, so the one that Derek mentioned the other day, about our last year, I made one larger because the piece of wood I had was just a fabulous, uh, I used Madrone Burrow or something like that. And I thought this would be a really nice little thing if I put a mirror in there. And it worked out nicely, made a nice tight fit. And you can make those very flat. These, what I'm really wanting to do, the goal is to put something in there. So when someone looks at this box and said, what can you put in there? Well, if you have rings on, the idea is to make it thick enough to put a ring in it, for example. Now you're going to work out and you put that in your purse. Take the jewelry off, those kinds of things. <clears throat> All right, so I'm almost deep enough. I'm just feeling this. I'm going to make this more curved. I can feel the thickness is easily a quarter of an inch. I have, no, I have plenty of thickness here. We can make, see if we can make some. Okay. sit right in here like this, give me an idea how much thickness I have. I'm just using my finger to feel it right now. Okay, so now this has not got a nice curve to it, and this, the way I have this cut, is not allowing me to make that turn, to make that nice curve. I'll try it a little bit more, but then I have my go-to tool to make this nice curve on the inside. And I'm not quite to the edge here where I want that lip to be. I'll show you what I do with that. We'll do that first. This is a tool that is just a straight, was a straight scraper. And what I've done is, I've made it an angle on the end. Oops, you're going the wrong way. I look down. You want it down? Yeah. Sorry. There you go, now you can see it. Here, this one. Anyway, this side and that side forms close to a right angle. So this is like a box scraper. It allows you to get to the end of the box and give yourself a right angle down the bottom. This is cutting edge on this side, cutting on that side. And this is just a little bit short of actual 90 degrees, okay? So it's round, rounded here on this side. It's got a nice bevel cut on this side. So what that allows me to do, it allows me to get back, holding it at center line, and go straight in, following the line there, and along with the uh, handle. So we can try and see how that works. What do you want? What view do you want? <laughs> well, see, let's see what this looks like. Let's see. So, 
I want that to be pretty straight. And I also want that to have a little chamfer on the side. So that when we bring the bottom part up to it, it'll kind of snap in there all right. <clears throat> so let's just say that's the depth of my little uh, catch for the, for the female, or the male part that's coming in. <clears throat> Go back to our gouge. Let's kick it out. Oh. checking the thickness to see if we got enough. So this gives me something to play with when I design whatever the top's going to be. I don't need to go any farther than that. I'm happy with that. And I would normally sand this, this edge. And I like to actually, again, we talked about that little joining part when you put the two together, a place to put your fingernails. So I don't want this totally flat across the top. I'd like that to cut in just a little bit. That's all I gotta do. I will shape the top when this is attached to the bottom. Then I will take the bottom and put it in a jam shop to shape whatever I want to do on the bottom of that. So, let's call this the top and pass that around. There you go. Sure. Right now, the jaws that you have in that chuck are opened up really wide, and yeah, and and so they are actually coming out of the side of the chuck. When yes, that's that's potential danger. So when you're at home, do you normally have a tenon that's smaller than that on these, so that well, you get you get a is there good obviously reason. you can get your finger behind that now to measure the thickness, which is one benefit of that. If you're at home and you're using calipers, you wouldn't need it to be that wide open and that far out. Right? It, no, and it just depends on when you make your tenon, if it's a small tenon, how thick do I make it? And is that going to be part of the top or the bottom, whichever the case is? And I decided to make these wide because that gives me, I can remove all of that without that even being part of the design. So you can do it any way. I, I just feel comfortable with this because I know the chuck. I like the jaws. I like the fact that actually these keep me away from that part for the most part. Because they're longer. I would suggest if the jaws stick out past the, the chuck, take some uh, blue tape and just tape it around it because you could hurt your knuckles on there. Oh, sure. I know that. <laughs> Well, maybe if you're left-handed, you don't worry about that. So, yeah. That's close. Okay. You see, we do look at things differently, I will have to say. But we love it. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put a tenon on this end, flip it around. And then we're going to see if we can fit the top that's going around into that and find that little secret distance.
I just do this, this allows me, without thinking, always to get a nice corner there so that it sits in the dry track and it's not loose. And again, you know, if you're really aggressive and you've got a towel like this, you know, it could be a fly off. But I found that just putting tension on it, spreading the jaws out, that's another reason why I spread them out farther. This gives me a little bit better hold, I think, when it's spinning. So maybe that quite a bit smaller. And if I was trying to hollow or do something of this nature, obviously you want to hold as much of the tenon as you can, not just eight points. So this is not, I'm not putting a lot of force on this, so this is kind of bad way to hold. But if you needed to, you'd make it so that when it was back there, it's a make a good circle. And at this point, this is just a quick way for me to do it. I'm not measuring anything at this point. <clears throat> and when that top comes back, we'll measure it and I'll show you what I do. spinning and being able to push just one side in to get yourself an idea where it is. For whatever reason, the way I look at it left-handed, I make a nice mark here and I block a couple centimeters on that side, not centimeters, but millimeters on that side. Then I move it now. I, I don't find that to be easy for me. So my way is make this a flat surface. Make a bunch of lines. Then when I get my lid back, somebody has it. Am I right? Here you go. So, I'm going to measure this, maybe give it just a smidge more width to start with, and then sneak up on this to make it small enough. So what, in order to start, what I do is I hold this up to a line and see where it fits. I'm on the second line and I'm, I'm on the third line on the right side. So it's going to be somewhere in between there. So if I bring this down, again, this is one that fits inside the lid. So this is the edge that's going to be sticking up. Okay? So I can come in to this third line before I have to start worrying about getting too close, getting too tight. Okay, we'll play with that. Everything's right there. A 
you can go that way to do it. You're just aware of where it comes this way. It seems like it's working better if I go. So there's the third one. We know it. Not quite there, okay? So we can start taking a little bit off at a time and see how it works. Now, you can do that with a tool like this, or you can do it with a little skew. For me, the skew, and this is one that I got that uh, Colin, um, what do you think of that now? Call one way. Call one way, thank you. The sign also, I could read it. <clears throat> Uh, anyway, you notice that this has a taper, which is interesting, because they use it very much like this really very handy tool for it. It's just like when I was watching Nicole do the <clears throat> using that uh, bedan. I have a bedan at home, and guess what? I use it like a bedan. It uses it upside down, and it scrapes, and it just digs, and it's so it's sitting over there on the shelf right over here, right? So now I get to learn, that in this class, I get to learn a different way to use the tool. Anyway, so I can start going in, just take a bit of a time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this edge. I'm going to make this edge, as I'm looking at this, it's going to go slightly tapered in. And I'm going to take the end off so that it's got a soft little chamfer on the end. So that it fits in there, and then when I push, compress the wood a little bit, and that allows it to go in. That's the goal. Let's see how we can do this. Yeah, take it a break scrape would be. I'm using it like a parting tool would be. You can yeah. use a parting tool the same way. It's going to be the same idea. What I like about this is this is not a parting tool. It's a right angle. It's got an angle to it. Okay. You can see this. Are you going to see it down camera? Yeah. So it's got an angle to it. You know, the bottom line, what I'm getting at is, if I can hold this so this line is straight, the blade is angled back. So if I now make the blade parallel to the face of the wood here, when I cut in, I'm going to be left a slight indent, which is what I'm looking for. So let's just see where we are. Not even close. Look at this again, and it's about halfway between that second line and the edge. So I got a little ways to go. is if you're impatient here, then you start making the box thinner because you screw it up. Once you make it too small, you can't make it bigger. <laughs> you gotta do it again. Nothing. But we're moving in the right direction.
And I know that there are lots of other ways that you can do this. And if you were doing, you were a professional dental trader or whatever, you make this an angle, find out where it gets, and then go straight back from there. I just do it this way. I like I'm taking my car, but... So that's tight. That's a problem. Tight. Good, right? Um, so we can finesse this a little bit more. But this, if it's tight like that, it allows us to work on the bottom side. Then we have to still get it apart. And <clears throat> here's the question. Just a thought. Forty-seven minutes. Yeah. Um, so I haven't sanded anything, this is just sort of a demo thing. Uh, but I do want to get it apart so that we can make a jam check for this to shape the bottom. So let's just make this a little bit looser. Doesn't have to be quite that tight. Stock up. What do I need to do first? I need to get some idea of how thick this is going to be. Um, and without my little measuring thing, we can say the thickness of it is two inch. And we are Five-eighths of an inch in. So I've got room to take this off and shape it nicely without worrying about going through.
So when you're doing this, because it's just a jam jump, try and do a cut, which is what I've been doing here, is pushing that way rather than trying to follow a curve this way. Because it'll come off. You don't have to look for it in the shop. Ideally, you would think you cut, cut that way. I don't think I can get there. I can still do. A little bit, a little bit of energy there. And I see the color. So, here's another thing that I like. It doesn't necessarily work all the way with this shape. We use a, just a negative ring shape flat. Make sure it's on center, which it is. And if you just rock it like this, you can't go into the code. But that is almost like it's been sanded. Nice surface. Still see it's still a line right in there, so see if we can do something like that. So Rich, how did you decide on the shape that you need? Well, this is gonna give me when I'm looking at this, it's gonna give me that thickness on that half. So I'm gonna have a wider box, which is kind of what I was thinking about doing. Now, if I want on the bottom, I can just make it just kind of a flat bottom where this sits up. And that's what the original uh, clamshell box I looked at that uh, Greg Key made looked like that I made. Sort of looked like that. It was a higher top and just a little shallow bottom. It really doesn't make any difference. I'm just looking at the total space between the surface of the bottom and the surface of the top. Okay? Let's try this one more time. the rest of that could come out when it's in here. And now the trick is to get this off of here. Let's see where we can do that with a thread. I think my nails are going to fit in there. Nice and tight. Okay. Um, just keep passing it off there. Let's see what we got there. Don't use it as a frisbee. Not yet. So now that we have this nice fit, we can decide. The shape we want for the bottom if we want it flat. I would put that back on there, which I didn't do, to get this diameter to play with. Let's just take the inside stuff out.
Yeah. Two. I'm just going to take that a little deeper. That's not awful. I could probably live with that just like that. I don't have to do anything different with this edge in here. On the top, I had to make sure that it was straight going in. I don't need to do anything fancy just to do it. But let me just show you one thing. If you happen to have a little scraper like this, it's heavy duty. It doesn't vibrate. That's why I like it. And if I put this on center, which it's going to be. Not too big. No. Well, here, just while it's off, just watch this. With the curve, they come right out to the edge like that. And it's just light. Okay, we're just getting that little powder coming on. Let's just see what it does. Right in the middle. Two mark on the outside. Let's see if we can get those. easy the first time. I had no way to grab it. I still don't. Okay, until I get this ridge off. And this will work on. So I just use a push cut for this. Generally don't go all the way through. So what I want to do right there, you can use your, this does not have a nice point on it, so I come in this way to make that little groove. It's not as easy as if I use my little screw. And I just come in. Accent that so that you can That's the idea. So I've got that accented. I can change this fan a little bit. If I feel like I like it, I think what I'm going to do is make the bottom 
slightly smaller than all of that and be flatter. As you're shaping the exterior of the lid. I'm sorry? As you're shaping the exterior of the lid when the two of them are fit together. Uh, I noticed that you left that one at least, at least a little bit thicker. Um, if you had gone thinner on that, would you have heard the harmonics before the boom? Um, say that again. I can't get this off yet. Okay, so it's still too tight. So it still comes off difficultly, which when it's that tight, you can sand a little bit here. No, no, the, the piece itself yes, is a little bit thicker than uh, oh. some of the ones that you had passed around. And I'm assuming that's for demo purposes, but as you have that attached to the box uh, with a friction fit and you're shaping the outside, um, are you able to make that, um, if, if you had made it thinner? Go like this to, to see whether or not it's too thin. That's what uh, uh, Laurent was doing, right? Yes, and if we set it up there, you can probably get, you can probably figure it out. I, I can't tell the difference right now, but you could probably say, feels, feels like I get more of a sound here than there. So it's thicker right in this little part. So you won't hear anything while you're turning? No. Before it goes Oh. Oh, before you go all the way through, you mean? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. If you're in a hurry, you're going to go through a lot of them. <laughs> and that's why I just said, my, I, I'm not a production turner. I never wanted to be. Right. So I take my time, and I palpate. I feel it. And I can feel that right there at that corner where I was tapping. Can you hear the difference there? That's what you're listening for. Would you have the ability to uh, take or put that on the jaws to reverse mount it and turn it that way so you could feel? I will. The difference? I will. Main, I will mention to you there are some ways to do it that you can put this on a. Uh, vacuum chuck, for example. You can't measure when it's on a vacuum chuck, can you? So you have to get an idea of how thick it is from this point to the edge. And then you subtract that difference from where your mark is. Paul had brought up a really good point where if you actually mount that uh, on the, the, the chuck, if the chuck jaws itself, you could expand into the box fit, right? You have to, you want, there's a, so, so say I did this, I did it this way with the jam truck. If I was at home wanting not to do a demonstration, I would put this on my vacuum truck. Vacuum truck, but. And then when I turn this around, I'd finish the bottom while it's there, I'd bring the tool stock, uh, tail stock up. I hold it right in place, it's perfect, and I measured this beforehand, like I was saying. If you measure this distance, and then you measure how deep it is and subtract it, you know how thick this is going to be. And there's a lot of ways to figure the thickness. There's another way that you could do this. If you were to take something of this nature, you can put this in the chuck backwards like that. You can make this approximately that size of almost this shape. Do some bandsaw lines there where this fits into the chuck. And then use that as a self made compression chuck. You have about 15 minutes, and that's it. Well, I'm almost done. And we still got to do the thing. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it. I'm sorry. I can go faster. Anyway, so I'm happy with this. I'm happy with basically the diameter that I've created. Let's see if we can move along here.
Okay. Let's just say I sanded this now. And what I want to do is make a jam chuck so this can fit into it, turning it around. Why can't you just fit that into the jaws? Well, you could. Would you break it? I mean, it's you're going to damage that little, you're going to damage this unless it's perfect diameter for the circle of the jaws, which you could do. That's one way to do it, okay? Um, I chose to do this to illustrate, so we'll see if I can actually make it happen. Get us just a rough piece of wood. That's too loose. There's a little uh, depression in there right now, so I'm going to make that flat. <clears throat> So what I want to do is I want to make a ridge from here in where this can fit on the outside of this. Okay? So again, here we are with those pencil files. Let me, we'll see if we can do it a little quicker this time. Should be it's close to what it was. It's a little bit tighter. That's why it fits too tight. Anyway, we're just about at the last line. So that's fine. Advantage of the scraper doing this is when I put it in there and it's this angle, this line is in line with the ways the lathe. I can cut on this edge. Okay? So I can take just a little bit off. And that might be all I need to do. So that's not going to stay by itself. See that? And I'm not going to fool with it. We'll just bring the tails back up. I got a good quarter of an inch, so I'm just going to make this a nice flat bottom and go from there.
just say I like that shape, but I know this isn't tight. You can try a little saliva on it. See if that will tighten it up temporarily. Piece of paper. Excuse me? Piece of paper. Yep, we can do that. Let's see if this works. Or here comes the rescue. Here comes the rescue. <coughs> Are you going to type it? Oh, can do a lot of that. We can do that. Let's see if this we can do this. Yeah. No. Very, very gentle on this. All right, so a better way to do this, we don't have time. A better way to do this would be flatten this, start over, okay? Is that good enough for everybody? Yeah.